There we go. All right, guys. More people here than I was expecting. As I was going to say, everyone gets early lunch because this won't go on for 50 minutes, but, you know, I hope everyone's hungry. Um, I might as well just start off with a bit about myself. Um, I am the director of a company called Meteor API. We deal with business intelligence, so um, metadata is reasonably key to what we do. Um, I joined the OODT project. Um, I generally work in the OSBI, open source business intelligence um, sector, Pentaho, Talend, that type of thing. Um, and I'm interested in data, data visualization. And I like making stuff easy for end users because I don't like answering their questions. So if it's easy, it makes my life easy. Um, so a disclaimer to start with, I put this in because after talking to people last night, there's clearly some expectations. I don't work for NASA or JPL. As you can tell, I'm English. Um, so they don't, they don't like employing foreigners. Uh, <laughs> Uh, there were supposed to be more OODT talks, and so I was just going to be the bit part that sort of came up with some ideas and showed some stuff off, and they were going to give some talks about how you really use it in, in NASA world, um, but they're not here, because JPL said they couldn't pay him. Um, I've not met, met Chris Mattman, but he seems like a nice guy. Um, Sean Kelly, who is the PMC lead, um, he cooks nice food, so it seems. And I've been told by my fellow directors not to leave here without handing out business cards. So if anyone's interested in BI or anything like that at the end, then come see me and we can have a chat. Um, so an overview of um, the talk. Um, it's, there's some theoretical stuff and then a bit of a demo just to try and um, demonstrate how some of these things should work. Um, there you go, you can see it on the screen. So, we might as well get started. Scientists love writing scripts. They absolutely love it. Um, if, if, if you can write it in Bash, if you can write it in Python, they will go and do it, which is great for scientists, but it's not great for end users. Um, and so, an awful lot of the ODT platform is either Java classes, writing your own code, or configuring XML files, and it takes ages. Um, but in NASA, they love it, so that's how they do things. Um, I come from the business intelligence world, as I touched upon, and we like graphs, we like drawing data flow diagrams, you know. We don't like writing scripts where we can. Um, and so, OODT, I've been trying to figure out how the crossover should work, because there's a massive amount of metadata being used in the business intelligence um, environment at the moment, um, especially with the Hadoop guys, you know, all the big data stuff. Um, people are chucking all these um, files into their HDFS cluster. Um, but how do you know what's in there and how do you manage that um, e ecosystem and environment? Um, so that's where I can see OODT um, coming in and playing a part, um, because that obviously would allow people to um, query their staging area, query their um, document store to find out what's actually being kept um, in their data system. Um, there we go. I actually wrote a slide about it. <laughs> um, in the BI environment, there is continually more and more um, files to, for people to manage, for people to deal with. Um, retaining the metadata allows people to actually, you know, in, in five years' time, look back at the data and still understand where that came from in the first place, whereas staging areas and storage areas for a lot of BI projects are just a big folder with loads of files in. So, you know, you can obviously name your file, give it a date, give it um, some sort of tags, but obviously uh, having a metadata framework allows you to... Um, keep track of this stuff over time. Um, ODT obviously is a distributed uh, platform, so should um, your business intelligence um, infrastructure cover multiple sites, and ODT can be used as a central uh, query platform. Um, and it allows you to keep 
um, relationships between the, the data sets that you're ingesting. So obviously, um, not all the data in a BI platform will come from exactly the same place. So the metadata allows you to uh, keep track of the relationships between the data as it comes in. Um, and so going back to where we started, why use BI tools in the OODT environment? Um, going back to ease of use, you know, if you can make things easy for end users, sometimes the scientists, sometimes, uh, you know, just back office people, you know, if you can make that, their lives easier, you're going to get increased adoption. Um, the adoption would be quite useful because, as you can see, I'm the only non-JPL guy here. So the more adoption for ODT and similar frameworks, the better. Um, it allows non-programmers to build out ODT services um, rather than having to rely on coders to write all your uh, custom ODT pipeline. You can obviously uh, drag and drop all this. I would hope it would get you to production quicker once you get um, used to creating visual um, data processing pipelines. It's generally quicker than writing a bunch of custom Python. Um, drag and drop and easily accessed analysis and reporting. So obviously once you've got your data into um, ODT, it's always quite useful to know what's in there and, you know, and, and, and keep, track of, uh, keep track of the data. <clears throat> so just running through some uh, use cases where OODT might come in handy, come in helpful for BI uh, environments. Uh, so the big data um, idea is generally uh, the primary use case I can, I can see OODT being used for currently. Um, obviously allowing you to um, turn your uh, HDFS cluster into an ODT um, file manager storage area. Um, and then so ODT will allow you to track that information over a period of time um, as opposed to it just being dumped in a big file system. Again, the distribution the distributed nature of the ODT platform allows people to uh, access data all over the globe. So if, you're, if you're, you happen to be a, 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 a shop, maybe, that's got multiple um, stores and all their data is located at a specific store, then obviously you can use, H, um, you can use OODT to query the, the metadata at the different stores rather than having to pull it all into a central location. <clears throat> Using the workflow pipeline um, allows you to pump data into ODT and process it as it's going in. Um, so instead of having a um, scheduled, uh, scheduled data integration job or what have you, um, if you have um, services that can push the data into o ODT, then obviously you can uh, run the uh, data integration routines on, on that data as it's coming in, as opposed to it being a pull-in. So, um, we might as well run through a few ideas. So, obviously, one of the key parts of ODT is getting data into it. It's pretty pointless having ODT without having any data in it you're not going to get very much use out of it. So currently, you either have um, custom Java code or you pump it in via the command line and or, again, the workflow stuff. Um, but I like drawing pictures and not writing code. So hold on a second. <coughs> So this is uh, Pento Data Integration, which is an open source, mostly Apache licensed um, data integration tool. And I appreciate that it doesn't look great at the resolution, but there we go. Um, what it allows you to do is, anyone ever used PDI before? Mm, yes, we. Um, so, for the one person that already knows, I won't bother to explain. Now, um, for, for the people that don't know how PDI works, it allows you to create um, data integration routines. Um, so, in this instance, 
it starts at the left and works to the right. Um, and so I want to process a bunch of OODT um, files and get them into the file manager, preferably without writing any code. So it works a bit like this. So the first step is get the file names. Ooh, that's big. And so it checks a certain directory for a bunch of MP3s. Um, I did have to write some code because we haven't yet got a uh, ticker uh, plugin. And so uh, the, the user defined Java class um, plugin allows you to effectively write uh, custom plugins just using Java code. And so this extends on the OODT demo where Chris, um, which Chris wrote about ingesting MP3 files. And so what this little bit of code does is obviously just run through the MP3 that it's getting, um, extract the various bits of metadata and then pipe out, pump out the metadata, relevant metadata to the uh, stream. Um, so I just pulled out the usual ones, title, artist, genre, album, all that type of stuff. And so that ends up um, in the data flow. <coughs> um, because data integration tools aren't really too great at handling um, arrays of data, um, I then convert the, the metadata into a JSON blob um, and then use that and the ingestion to just make my life easier. As the, pro the project progresses, I'll probably make this a bit easier, but at the moment, the JSON is fine. And then I've written a uh, custom PDI plugin. So it's rather simplistic in the way it works at the moment, um, but you get the idea. So as the, um, as the data flows in, you define the file name field, which is obviously where OODT is going to find the file to start with. Um, and then I also specify the metadata field, um, which is obviously all the custom metadata that you want to associate with um, the file that you're ingesting. Um, so that's all there is to the ingestion side of things. And then because it's lovely and graphical, um, you can then hit the run button. And off it goes. You can see the ticks. It didn't break. Yay. Um, off it goes, runs down the stream, and obviously gets to the end, um, and then pumps in the MP3s that it's found into um, ODT, of which it found at the bottom four. So if you're wanting to get data into ODT um, without having to write a bunch of code, this is quite clearly um, quite a streamlined way of doing it. And in, Depending on what you're wanting to ingest, obviously you might have to write custom plugins to get the ingestion routine kick-started. But the great thing about PDI and Talend and other similar uh, data integration toolkits is obviously there's already a fat bunch of steps. So when you're ingesting the data, you might want to also do some transformation at the same time, you know, in, rather than get the data back out and pump it back in again. Um, so there's nothing stopping you getting the file, running some uh, transformation routines on your data, and then pumping the result into um, OODT, which would obviously um, negate the need for doing any post-processing. Um, <coughs> the other useful thing about PDI is it allows you to scale up on the fly. So you can tell it to either run multiple copies of a step um, on a single machine, or you can tell the whole thing to cluster. So if you're ingesting a massive amount of data, you can then um, tell it to run the same ETL routine across multiple um, servers in your cluster, which obviously will increase the performance of what you're doing. Um, so just to prove that I wasn't lying and this has actually worked. We have the uh, lovely um, Ops UI. <laughs> um, user interface, um, but as you can see, there's a bunch of generic file stuff here. So um, there we go. Um, so there's a brief introduction to getting data into um, ODT. Um, 
there's plenty of scope for um, expanding upon that. Um, obviously, it depends on specific use cases and the way you're going to do it. But um, you know, the 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 ODT output plugin, the ingestion plugin, um, will allow you to run that at scale across multiple systems um, and ingest pretty much whatever you want. Going back to the presentation, briefly. So we've got data into OODT. Um, marvelous. Uh, the, the, once you've got the data in, how do you get the data out? Now, once again, um, in OODT world, there's an awful lot of class writing or file manager command line stuff um, that makes getting data out of OODT an interesting challenge. Um, and again, I don't really like writing code. And also, I like to just be able to... You know, if I, if I go to a client and we have a bunch of metadata and they say what's in it, I'd like for them to just be able to look it up. Um, you can pass SQL queries to ODT. Um, you can also run um, File Manager with Solar, and Solar will interact with the File Manager. Um, and so, we'll go on to the next bit. Just before we go on, has anyone got any questions about the ingestion stuff? No? Cracking. Where do I want to go? Not that one. Let's find the right terminal. So, the way that I came up with being able to analyze the data, the metadata and the, um, the other information that's contained within the file manager itself is via Solar. Um, Solar was quite easy to plug in and set up a configure. You run it in the same Tomcat instance that the file manager runs. And so it's relatively easy to query. The problem is with stuff like Solar is uh, if you're a data analyst, the chances are you know SQL and you like writing SQL queries or you have some tool that creates SQL. You don't have a tool that creates solar query stuff. Um, and so that was clearly going to be a bit of an issue because I want to be able to give um, analysts the ability to be able to analyze the data within OODT without them having to learn yet another query language. You know, there's all the big data and no SQL data stores coming out at the moment. They all have their own different query language chances are your data analyst won't know how to query in you know, Mongo or Solo or whichever one you choose. But they will know how to write SQL queries. Um, so I utilized a project called Optic, which was written by um, a guy called Julian Hyde, who used to work for Panto and now works for one of the Hadoop guys. There we go. Um, and so... He's written this optic um, platform framework. And the idea with optic is it creates a JDBC compliant interface to any um, object that Java can process. So it can either be in memory, it can be over the wire. Um, your, you know, the, the idea being that if your, if your project doesn't have a, a SQL interface, you can plug optic into it and optic will convert the SQL into whatever um, query method you want to use on the, on the backing data store itself. Um, and within that, it also allows you to, it, it has a built-in SQL query optimizer, it will do joins, group buys, a whole lot. If your backing data store doesn't support um, that query type, so a good example was there's a Mongo adapter out there. It, until recently, the Mongo adapter didn't support the aggregation stuff, but people want to be able to write group buys. So it will export all the data into Optic and then do the group buy in memory. Um, so this is ideal for writing um, a solar adapter. So I spent a few nights doing just that. Um, this is uh, SQL Iron Client, just to prove that I'm not cheating. Um, so I've now just uh, connected to my um, 
solar instance that's running on the OADT setup, and I can tell it to show me all the columns. So if I scroll up to the top, you can see, sort of, um, that defined here is a schema and database called test, and then in it, um, where I've extracted metadata from the first lot, um, they now appear as columns um, within the um, query itself. So I can then run um, select star from test. Yay. And so um, Optic has gone and taken my SQL query, converted it into um, Solar, and then run it against the Solar server, got the data back, and then rendered it as a table. Um, <coughs> The good thing about using Solar is when I add more metadata, um, Optic doesn't need to know about the new columns, they just magically appear. And so, you know, as your metadata changes or expands, then you can just, um, it'll just magically appear in your query. Um, so I took that, but obviously that's not the nicest way for people to be able to analyze data. So um, I'm also a member of a project called Saiku, um, which is a, uh, an OLAP query tool which allows you to create cross-tab queries, drag and drop, um, against, a, against a SQL data store. So I dumped the optic uh, jar file into a Seiku server and I wrote a quick schema. So the, the schema here um, defines various columns within the database itself. Um, which in turn Seiku then allows people to query by. So if I me go back to this one. So this is Seiku, rather small, but there we go. <coughs> um, and this is now, Seiku uses a query language called MDX. Um, MDX is then tra translated into SQL which is then translated into solar and back and forth. Um, but it then does allow users to just query what's in your um, ODT data store just by dragging and dropping. So obviously I can find that I've got uh, a bunch of MP3s in there and a couple of pictures. Um, you know, and as, a, as an end user, they've not had to write a line of code They've not had to do anything apart from drag two things onto a, um, onto a canvas. Um, you know, and then stuff like, woo, charts. So you can, get, you can quickly and easily analyze what's in your data store. You can also return, obviously, things like file names, which allow people to extract it if you want to write an extraction routine. And so um, that was sort of phase one. And I thought, oh, yeah, it's quite good. You know, people can now easily see what's within their ODT data store, um, but they can't get the data, which is quite annoying. So I then go on to, uh, was on down, uh, getting data out of ODT part two. Um, so I wanted to expand upon what I'd already um, designed using the solar stuff, and allow people to be able to obviously extract the files and do a bit more analysis. Now, before I show you this stuff, I have to warn you that I'm not a web developer, so it doesn't look very nice. Um, anyone here, we've got PDI user, anyone use the BI server? No, wise people, anyway. So Pento, along with data integration, creates a uh, product called the BI server, which allows you to create dashboards, reports, interactive stuff, there's a Seiku plugin, you know, that all this stuff can be um, end user driven. And so, it's probably log me out, so let's find out. Yeah. Um, so this is the BI server of sorts. Uh, this is the landing page that end users can end up going to see. Now, there's a, there's a framework called the C-Tools uh, framework, which has been written by the community for um, years and years and years, um, that allows end users to create custom dashboards and um, use custom data sources and all sorts of different bits and pieces. 
And there's loads and loads of plugins available. Now, what they've recently released is a platform called Sparkle. Um, <coughs> Sparkle allows you to create applications from within the BI server itself, which obviously then allows you to integrate with the data side, the reporting side, and the dashboards don't necessarily have to be um, for visualizing data. They can be for just changing configuration files or processing stuff differently or uploading files to the server. So Sparkle um, lends itself quite nicely to um, uh, creating uh, uh, a user interface that allows people to interact with the OEDT stuff. Obviously, there's Ops UI. I find that it's got endless problems. Um, so I figured I would try and write a Sparkle alternative. Of course, now it will just freeze. Come on. Yay. Slowly. <coughs> so what Sparkle allows you to do is create a bunch of elements, um, either dashboards or PDI endpoints, um, that you can then allow people to interact with. Um, so going back to the PDI stuff that I showed earlier, obviously we went through how to get data into, um, into the file manager. So the next stage was obviously how do you get the data back out of it. So there's another plugin called the ODT File Manager Get plugin, because I don't have a better name for it, um, that allows you to either get file listings out of the file, out of the file manager or actually get a specific file. So what that allows me to do is then write an endpoint for Sparkle that um, lists all the files that are in the file manager, I hope. There we go. Um, so I've done a bit of filtering here to take out various bits and pieces, but this is um, obviously the files that have been received into file manager with their IDs and type and all that type of stuff. Um, so what that endpoint then allows me to do is reference it in here and also um, then allows me to use it within um, Sparkle itself. So this is where I have to apologize for my web design. Um, it's not very pretty. But, you know, it's, a, it's the HTML and CSS, so you can change it however you like. Um, you know, so that PDI endpoint that I just showed you is now rendered within a table on the screen. Um, and should you not want to show some of this information or you want to show more, you just change the query on the, and PDI and it will start rendering more and more stuff or less stuff. Um, what that then does is allow me to click on a line and very simplistically at the bottom, I just put a link. But that then allows me to click that. And it will go off to, um, it will go off to the file manager. And again, using a PDI um, routine, it passes the parameter to PDI saying, can I have this file by this ID? Um, and then it gets returned and written to a zip file, which we then return to the dashboard. So it allows people to download files from um, file manager without having to leave the BI suite and you know, or without having to do anything other than click a line on the table. So just go back to this one. This is, this is the extraction routine and I tell it to get a um, file by an ID called Jeff. Um, and then it runs through, writes it to a directory, and then sends the result back to the dashboard. So that allows people to um, parameterize the, the data integration routines, and therefore make, you can pass information both ways. It's not a one-way uh, ticket. So that was the download file. And then also, I just wanted to, instead of using the Solar stuff and the Sparkle stuff, um, the SQL stuff, I just wanted to create a quick analysis dashboard um, that uses the same technology. So what we've done here 
although it's not very inspirational because there's only flat files and generic structures, um, <coughs> is created a bunch of endpoints in PDI that basically just return all the, returns all the data, does a group by, and sends back a, an amount to the um, dashboard itself. Um, if you build out a platform like this, all these charts are interactive. You can click on them, you can drill, you can do all sorts of random stuff. Um, but as you can see, obviously, it's just returned the data back to the dashboard. Um, but going back to the original point, obviously, it allows people to um, analyze what's in ODT and get the information back. You can use PDI to get the information back out and pump it off to a, to a, a database or a NoSQL data store or something like that. Um, and then even the dashboards are... UI built, um, the odd bit of code has to be written, but largely, if I look in here, you know, I've got a table component and a text component. I haven't handwritten the dashboard. I haven't handwritten the application. It's all done by clicking through a web page. Um, so it's all thin client. It's all very lightweight and just allows people to build out ODT-centric applications without having to um, write code. So, did I put anything else? Now, um, if you're interested in all this stuff, um, everything obviously I've showed is open source. Um, if you look at the stuff I've written, I apologize for its code quality. I'm improving it. I'll get it done sometime this week. Um, but it does all work, and it's there in the various uh, GitHub repositories. Um, let's have some lunch. Okay, anyone got any questions? No? Marvelous. Let's go and eat some food. <laughs>